Have a good one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Constantine, and we're going to be doing a TVP today. And uh, Calicles is joining me as a co-caster. Uh, What's up? Calicles, go ahead and start your, your game in 3, 2, 1, start. Okay, we have Thorg spawning at the uh, top position. We are on Desert Oasis as the Red Protoss. And we have Calicles, my brother, spawning as the Blue Terran at the bottom position. Uh, now, this is a platinum level game. Uh, not incredibly good play, but uh, this game, I guess I would note that both players macroed pretty well. So you can pay attention to their build orders for macroing well. But uh, the micro in this game is solid, but not incredible. Yeah, we can see Thor going out at you know the right time to place his first pylon. So you can tell he's a relatively good player, although he's only rocking about 25 APM right now. I actually like that. I can't stand the... Uh, the 300 APM in the first three minute players, um, you know, certain players out there that could be listening to this right now that might actually uh, be doing that in most of their games. Calicles rocking the 17 APM. Uh, I like the place really don't need supply high depot. APM. Jesus Christ. I know. And not in the first 30 seconds of the game. No, I was actually complimenting you because I, I hate spammers sometimes. I mean, spamming is one of those things that it's supposedly good for good players because it gets them warmed up for the later stages of the game. But honestly, I've I've never spammed in the late stages of the game. I'm actually more of like a a, a slower player towards the late stages of the game because I want those crisp, quick, and like you know strong clicks rather than just kind of clicking all over the place. I tend to do the clicking all over the place when I'm doing small micro early in the game if I'm doing like a reaper harass. So. uh... Thorg gonna get his probe in and see that Calicles spawned in his Terran. Cali plays random as well, as I do. Uh, he's got his gateway going up. Uh, pretty normal timing on that. Look to be getting him get his. Get, look for him to be getting his gas relatively soon. He's saving up those Chrono Boost. Don't know really if he's missing that. Now there it goes right there. Cali's getting his barracks up. It's always good against a Protoss or a Terran, if especially on a map like Desert Oasis where the rush distance is so far that. If the uh, Protoss player tries to Zealot Rush you or something, it's almost stupid. Um, it's always good to keep your buildings near uh, the center, so that that uh, the center of your you know main base by your command center. Oh wow! I didn't see him put a proxy down there in the bottom when I was playing this game. I don't think I ever found that proxy. Well, um, sometimes it can. Uh, interesting to see how he uses it. Yeah, sometimes you can end up losing a game because of that proxy, but other times it'll just play absolutely no purpose in the entire game. Good, good little play moving the Marine to the uh, front of uh, the entrance to the base, you can catch any probes I mean, coming in. Really, against a toss, honestly, as Terran, I would recommend blocking in because of what you said, the Zealot Rush. I mean, I know the distances on this map are far, but you can really get rolled if a guy goes quick speed Zealots um, and, and just tears right into your base really quickly without you being able to put any damage on him before he gets there. Yeah, that is so, true, but... Uh, Usually you want to be scouting early, a little earlier than you did here. Um, That's true. He's already got a side core and a gateway down, but he's just now started that stalker. That's a little bit behind. He didn't really need it all out all that fast because he's scouted you. and He's seen you aren't going for any Reaper kind of play. Now, uh, what you're doing here, you're throwing down three Raxes pretty early. You're only on one gas and uh, have a really low SCV count. I don't know if uh, you've been cutting SCVs to get this into production, but... Uh, no. It might just be early in the game for seeing these three reactors. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been building the whole time. I may have, you know, not been the thing as about adding religious the about it as so I should be. But is that a reactor takes like 50 seconds to build. That's two full marines. So in the time it takes to get that reactor out, you could have those two marines well, out, and then you could be building two more. Here's my, here's my logic. Um, I don't need the guys... I don't need early units because I've already scouted him and realized that he is going to one gate and he's obviously going for a little bit of a tech build um, and he doesn't even have his second gate out yet right now so I'm not really worried about an attack. I'd rather get my that, reactors I'd say that's a and, fair play. and tech labs That's down. definitely fair for this map because the rush distances are so far you can actually afford to do that but if you hadn't scouted or something to you know other players I would suggest uh, maybe being a little tentative. Um, you don't always have to throw down a reactor or a tech lab. Uh, in, in, as soon as you build a barracks, there's this kind of, kind of shying away from uh, this, like this idea that you have to have one of them there, and it's really not the case at all. Uh, a lot of good players will actually find really good use out of just empty barracks or you know lonely barracks. Well, lonely it's factories. like 
I'm definitely on board with that idea. Um, specifically, once you get your star port out and you're looking to maybe supplement your army with a couple different, you know, maybe just like a couple medevacs just to help with the healing. But uh, you're really using the star port there as a, sort of an insurance insurance item. If you see the other guy gets Colossuses or whatnot, um, then you can quickly throw down a reactor and, and sort of pull out some Vikings. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I mean, I would honestly, with the barracks early, if you're not getting attacked, you need to put down the additional, the sort of the supplement building, because otherwise you are hamstringing yourself long term. I mean, it's it's a cost benefit thing. Yeah, well, I like how you're throwing down that engineering base since you're doing such a, uh, a strong emphasis on yeah. the. Uh, yeah, I've supply locked yeah. myself as well. Yeah, that's always always bad, but um, so we can see that. Uh, Thorg is actually going for a pretty standard uh, two-gate robo. He's actually thrown down a third gateway, but he's already got his warp gates up. Uh, he's chrono boosting, chrono boosting out uh, his observer. He's got that rally point all the way. I mean, in honestly, he's. This is the first time I've seen this replay, and Thorg, you know, appeared to be a decent player, not too good when I was playing him. But really, looking at him now, he just has way too much money, and he's not even building any probes. He's not supply blocked. I really don't know what he's doing um, right now. Yeah, let me let me he's comment on that. Uh, I just I like that scan right there. You can see what kind of stuff's guarding the entrance, and it also you see him him warp in two units at the same time. That's kind of stupid on his part. If you you don't want to you know reveal your hand any more than you have to whenever you're being scanned. Uh, he did That scan didn't pick up the second gate, but the fact that he warped two uni units in made it obvious that you, you did ha he did have the second one. Yeah, I really don't like the fact, I've got the units tab open, that uh, he has less probes than you have SCVs. Uh, with the chrono boost, you should be able to, and we, here we go. And 900. Here we go, we got some action rolls, here. Yeah. Oh, trying to stim up there. Now, this play is actually a lot stronger than it seems like you it seems like he really force fielded you well but because you got those like two units up up that ramp they were able to provide sight for a little while yep he has enough sentries here to really kind of endlessly force field this so what what your what your play here is going to be and i assume that's what you're trying trying to do is to really sneak up that wall i would i would like to see um uh, what's his name? Thor moves some stalkers to like right here. Like I, this is a good play, putting this force field at the at the entrance. I would like to see him move. He's some getting stalkers more gates. You could get wow. some free shots off on on your marauders and marines, and you you'd have to be forced to move back. Uh, I like how you have the rally point set up, moving out all there. See, this is the kind of time when you know you can't be broken in the center. Oh, that's bad right there. Um, we won't even talk about that. Uh, with your what? What's that? What you happened? had some marines run around the. Oh room. yeah. That's just something that happens on this. Yeah. Because the because of the way the entrances are, you know. Because the way it, it depends. I have them rally pointed to my army. This is really something you should be careful with doing with rally pointing to your army. Always be aware of where your army is while you're rally pointing to them, because oftentimes your units will take an unexpected path to your army and go right through the enemy, and that's pretty much what happened right there. Now, if you see, now I move my army about five steps to the left. Every unit that comes out of my base is now going around the safe side. Um, and I just I had to sort of learn that. Um, I'm looking in your base. I see you got the reactor in the factory in order to uh, drop it for the starport. Well, I just stimmed up oh, the I'm ramp sorry. here, and he cut my army in half. But that's like what what John had said earlier. It doesn't matter because I have enough units up there to actually see. Yeah. And now he's com he doesn't have any more. Oh, he does actually, but he's not using the. He might uh, be trying to bait uh, you up. Force the ramp. field very well. That's a really good force field right there. Yeah, he's he's gonna win this fight. Uh, well, mostly because of reinforcement. And this was kind of a suicidal attempt by you. I'd say that he came out ahead here, and especially because you threw away your army, and right when yep. he got his robo bay down, this is actually and, yep. not too... Uh, that was, um... As this little suicidal... For me, that was almost an all-or-nothing attack. Yeah, that was an all-or-nothing attack. Now he's, uh, he's sort of pulling a... Uh, a warp prism down to sort of push a little bit with me. The uh, problem is he put the warp prism too close to my base, so I was able to see it and really make sure I got my units well, there. I wish that warp prism would have been a little to the left, so maybe he could accumulate some units before going yeah. in. Yeah. Well, um, honestly, I don't really know why he's even got this warp prism. I mean, sure, it's great. You can warp in. You probably also drop some units too. Uh, that's kind of stupid. He probably should have picked up that stalker to save him. But uh, with this pylon down here, um, you don't really need that warp prism. He's already scouted that you haven't walled in, so he can sneak units in to, like, right about here. And Yeah, it's a function of the walking distance, though. Yeah, That's I all. know. But He's going to bring the warp prism down just to, to shorten the distance. But I mean, the point's well taken. He could have warped him in somewhere outside of sight of my base. And now here what's happening is, is I realize at this point in the game that 
he sees me going MMM, or at least MM, and now I'm throwing down some, uh, or at least a star port in order to get some medevacs. But I've already sort of committed to the MMM build because I'm getting upgrades. So many upgrades that it's just pointless for me to try and transition to something that may be more effective against his stalkers. So I've got to sort of anticipate what he's going to do to counter me, and that seems pretty clear that he's going to try and get Colossus because that obviously rapes MMM. Um, and so what I do is I think, well, then I might as well counter that by getting Vikings ahead of time. Um, and that ends up, well, as you can see, he's, well, he's got one see. cost out already. I didn't know this at the time. Let's see. He actually got let's them a little faster than I anticipated. Even, you haven't even, yeah, this is one of the things you um, really need to be doing as a Terran player is throwing down a, uh, scans on their main base because if you go to the Calicles, like, vision, you can't actually even see that he has a robo. I mean, clearly you know he has a robo. You've seen... Um, a bunch of observers running around. Yeah. Um, I do like that you immediately went for the Vikings, because Vikings are really not that bad, especially whenever there's these long maps like this. If he were to somehow push out and you were to be at a little bit of deficit of a ground army because you started making Vikings, it might be a little problematic, but especially on this map with the distances so far, it's not that uh, big of a deal. And so it was actually good to get those Vikings out. A few Vikings can go a long way to stopping him from really be being... Uh, uh, powerful with those uh, Colossus. He's got one Colossus out now. He's working on that uh, Thermal Lance, extended Thermal Lance. He has an expansion on the uh, uh, outside base. On the this island, is, yeah. Which is a very yeah, intelligent thing. This is something thing. that he almost, I mean, you almost need to expect this once uh, he goes, to, he commits to any kind of War Prism yeah. play. It's, it's, it's almost, you know, it's, it's just completely wrong for a protest player to not do something like this after they've gone for a war prism drop and they still have that war prism alive. And I like how he's throwing the cannons down. It's just going to make it that much more safe. He knows that you've got marine marauders, so he, he knows there's going to be some medevacs involved. He's not going to have the mobility to, to bring this army right here over to it if you make a drop on him. And, uh, and just adding that little extra defense is going to ensure this base stays up throughout the whole game. I like how you went to the high yield, and I especially like the high yield that you chose. It's going to be pretty much in the path of your pushing with Terran, um, even though this is a, a Marine Marauder Force that's more mobile. Um, you can see some little bit of micro going on with these Vikings trying to get in some shots on those uh, Colossus. Um, but this location in his base is going to be a lot more easily defended than one over here, especially with that Warp Prism. Oh, he's going over to the other base, maybe just to check to see with this Warp Prism if you have an expansion. Big uh, big push at the front. I like how you've got the combat shield. That's really important whenever you're going up against the Colossus. Uh, and I like pulling him down into the, this, this little hole. The Vikings allow you to, to shoot no matter what with uh, force fields and stuff. Those force fields right there are really good, splitting off those two those units. But I would really like to see from you is maybe backing up a little bit, sending your Vikings around to try well, and catch the Colossus yeah. whenever it's out. That's what I just did right okay. here. As you can yeah. see, I, I send my Honestly, Vikings around though, from, the left from to do that. Thorg, I think there's a little too much stalker play. Um, I I just think that Marines and Mass are just too good against stalkers, especially with these medevacs. You only need a few medevacs. You have a Marine in there that you just realize and dropped out. So this looks like it's going to be a good game. He doesn't really have anything. Yep. You can go ahead and speed this up. Uh, what he essentially does is he tries to drag it out as long as possible and take the upper left-hand well, island. I just four times uh, it. I but that's not going to work. Um, uh, you never built an orbital command at your uh, ex at your rich mineral field expansion. I think that's a little bit of a that's blunder. A um, having extra scans late game is probably the most important thing about the orbital command. You can mule like crazy and still have enough to scan all around the map if he goes to DTs or something like that. Yeah. So what exactly did you do? I mean, we're probably going to go through this. Did you just go for a medevac drop? No. Yeah, I just dropped a bunch uh, of medevacs. It's really not worthwhile to watch. The instructive part is just looking at how powerful MMM can be, even against Colossuses, as long as you just get, and even at, without the terrain advantage, as long as you just get enough Vikings to take out a couple Colossus, they do massive damage against Colossus. They have great range so they can hit them from a long range away without actually having to take fire from all of the uh, the stalkers. And if you if you do that you can pretty much yep. negate the, the Colossus and then completely take well, out I've the four gate. The replay here. I was just gonna say that um I actually have no clue what I was gonna say. Alright, well we'll we'll sign off with that one. What the hell are you doing here with these three commandment centers? Huh? I do that too sometimes. End of a game, I'm just like, I'll throw down 400 command centers, see if I can boost my score a little bit. But all right, it's Constantine signing off. Thanks for watching.